elevate, to lift up or make higher, to raise to a higher state. Raise the spirits up, raise to a higher intellectual or spiritual level. When you think of elevating, you may think of spending more money. And while there are areas of life that can greatly improve by spending more, I have found that most lifestyle shifts that truly elevate my daily life don't cost anything or not much at all. These are small ways that I have elevated, enhanced, even romanticized my daily life. I like sharing these videos every so often because I find, especially in my 20s right now, that it is such a pivotal time where I'm just realizing a lot of things, as we like to say, and I find that there can be so many different outside forces, like this video that you clicked on that can tell you this is the best way to live your life, and if you do this, it's gonna change your life. And I never wanna say that one of these things alone is going to make or break your life and make your life worth living. These are just the things that have elevated my life. They've enhanced my life. And I think a lot of times when people tell you those things, they are so expensive or unattainable, but most of these things are very realistic. There's nothing groundbreaking about them, but at the end of the day, they have really improved my life personally. Starting with cultivating some sort of habit that gives you a sense of satisfaction satisfaction. I think at the end of the day, this is what we love about most of the habits in our life. But for me, one of the biggest things has been baking bread. There is something about baking something totally from scratch that is so satisfying to see, you know, all the exact ingredients that go into it and being able to refine your skill and to get better at baking. And I think especially with sourdough, that's the journey I've been doing lately. It is so much fun to learn about because it's such a science and it's been so satisfying just knowing that, hey, I can whip up a loaf of bread with my starter, water, salt, and some flour. And I'm not saying that you have to take up baking bread. I think that that can be a different habit for everyone, whether that be training for a marathon, something simple, like maintaining a solid bedtime routine that gives you a solid sleep schedule, learning how to draw better, or just reading a certain amount of books per month, whatever gives you that sense of satisfaction, I think is so important for just building your character and also increasing your confidence. Not letting loneliness hold you back. I find that my 20s have been a really fruitful time, but it's much different than when I was in college when I was surrounded by roommates or friends all the time. And while I am married and that is the closest relationship that I have in my life at this point, I do find that from nine to five most days, it can be kind of lonely when everyone's just working their jobs, working their normal lives. It's easy to feel kind of alone. And I have just learned over the years that it is so important to enjoy your own company. I know all my extroverts may be shaking in their boots right now. I would consider myself more of an introvert. I love being around people, but I have gotten to a point where I enjoy my time alone. And I don't let being alone kind of deter me from doing things that I enjoy, whether that be going to a coffee shop that I really wanna to go to or going on a walk by myself, eating lunch by yourself. For me, I found that I got a lot less scared about doing things by myself when I lived in New York City because while New York City is also a place where there are so many people and there's so many events going on and just so much all the time, I did find that a lot of my life was by myself and I recognized that kind of everyone was doing things on their own. They had their AirPods in on the subway and they were going every which way. Learning how your body best operates for me, over the past, I would say year and a half, I've really been on a journey of just learning how my body operates, the things that I enjoy doing when it comes to working out, the foods that work best for my body, and especially for me when it comes to nutrition and food. There was a point where I was vegetarian, which I don't think is wrong. I think if that's what works for you, then that's what works for you. But for me, cutting out food groups has just not been something that was really healthy. And especially eating plenty of healthy fats and as much protein as I can, these are things that my body loves. I can focus on the single task at hand when I'm properly nourishing myself and I understand how my body works. And that is a journey I've been on as I got off the pill. I've shared so much of this on my channel, but I'm really thankful that I feel like I understand how my body works. Boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. This is a huge one. I think especially as we get older and it seems like you have a lot less time than you did when you were a kid. It's so important to make time for the things that make you feel like you, that feed you your soul. For me, that's spending time with journaling and reading my Bible and having time to pray, having time to work out. Even if that's just three to four times a week, I want to make sure that's something that I schedule in my routine. And that means I cut back on work stuff or social obligations because I need those things to happen. I know life happens and I know we're all in different life stages. I know when you're in school and you become a parent, these are things that can kind of shift those habits around a bit. But I think if you're at a point in your life where you can't 
can't afford to put up those boundaries for maintaining your own mental health and just clarity it is so so important delegate when you can this is probably one of the only things in this video that you might actually have to pay someone or you know shell out some money i have always been someone who enjoys doing everything on my own and feeling the satisfaction of accomplishing everything on my to-do list by myself but that is just not a way to live your life especially if you are at the place where it makes more sense to pay someone to do the job better than you would on your own this can be for different areas of your life whether that be hiring an accountant or having someone clean your house or hiring a babysitter to go on a date night these are things that i think it's so special to cut from certain areas of your budget to make happen if it makes sense for you and your lifestyle one of the things that's always been really important to me is cooking from home i feel so much better when i know exactly what's going into my food i enjoy the process of cooking and i know this is something that a lot of times people just don't have a ton of time for say you have a lot of kids say you have a lot of stuff going on you're really busy at work something that has made it so much easier for us is actually having a meal kit delivery service and i've shared every plate before on my channel but i highly recommend every plate they are for one just the most affordable meal kit service i am so thankful to be partnering with them on today's video essentially they send you all the ingredients pre-portioned so you don't have to go to the grocery store and meal plan all those things that just take a lot a lot of time but you get everything sent to you you can pick exactly the meals that you want they have so many different meals on their website if you want to curate your plan if you're eating meat if you're not eating meat if you prefer to not eat pork you can switch out everything to fit your dietary preferences which i love most of the meals come together in about 30 minutes or so which is so nice especially if you are someone who has a busy schedule and i also really appreciate that a lot of the ingredients don't have a ton of waste like the potatoes the carrots a lot of those things aren't packaged which i personally really appreciate and i always say this but i set out all the ingredients and it's crazy just how they don't look like a lot when you set them all out but when you actually make the meal it just create such a beautiful meal that is so so yummy and so i'd highly recommend if you guys are looking to incorporate more cooking in your routine but you don't have the time you guys can get your first every plate box for just a dollar 49 per meal which is awesome by going to everyplate.com and entering the code michelle 149 seriously such a big fan they have made our lives so much easier even just doing this once a week having those meals for the week is so helpful to get back some of that time and of course such a great deal again you guys can go to every plate com and enter the code michelle149 to get your first box for just $8.49 per meal. I know we all know this, but getting quality rest. Lately these days, I have been on my resting kick. I think a lot of times in the past, I would think that resting meant, you know, sitting down with my laptop while also watching a show and working at the same time. And that's nice to do every now and then, but I have been actually prioritizing quality rest where if I need to sleep, I will set my timer for 20 minutes and take a 20 minute nap. And it just feels so nice to actually get that rest in and not feel like you're constantly on the go, constantly having to do something all the time. And when it actually comes to your health getting proper sleep helps reduce your stress and anxiety improves your mood decreases your blood pressure helps with chronic pain relief and can also improve your immune health sleep is so important it's one of those pivotal factors that can make or break your health and so take it seriously shift how you carry yourself one of the things about being a vlogger means that i watch a lot of footage of myself and the amount of times that i've looked back on footage and i am hunched over look like i'm just having the worst day ever and that's not the worst thing but i find that people perceive you so differently but more importantly you perceive yourself differently when you carry yourself well when your shoulders are back when you feel confident it can really affect your mood when you actually open up and you feel that confidence in your physical presence when you're walking about and not always feeling like you're closed in your arms are covering your body be confident and i think that other people will perceive you that way time blocking more burdensome tasks one of the things that i used to hate doing a lot and i still don't love doing is making appointments but i have found that having you know an hour on my calendar to just do all the things that i'm putting off is so helpful even just having a life admin day if that is something that you're needing to do all those little things that you've been putting off that you need to get done but you don't necessarily want to do it feels so good when you get them done so just set aside that chunk of time to actually get that stuff done so then you can focus on the more fun things that you want to do avoid gossip traps i'm not saying that i'm perfect with this but i can just say that i am such a worse version of my 
myself when I hang out with people and all we do is pick apart other people or even just lightly kind of in a fun way gossip about other people. I wanna read this quote, it's from John Mark Comer. It's from The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, which is one of my favorite books. It says, because what you give your attention to is the person that you become. Put another way, the mind is the portal to the soul. And what you fill your mind with will shape the trajectory of your character. In the end, your life is no more than the sum of what you gave your attention to. That bodes well for those apprentices of Jesus who give the bulk of their attention to him and to all that is good, beautiful, and true in this world. But not for those who give their attention to the 24 seven news cycle of outrage and anxiety and emotion charged drama or the nonstop feed of celebrity gossip and cultural dribble. But again, we become what we give our attention to for better or for worse. If you find that you are only spending time with people who can only talk about other people, I would highly recommend finding new friends, finding new people to surround yourself with because that is just not a way to live your life. Or if you find yourself constantly consuming content that is just you know, belittling or even just talking about others all the time, I'd highly recommend shifting what you're consuming because it really does shape you as a person. Working smarter, not harder. This is another thing I think especially in the last year we've learned and for us specifically that is with credit cards. I think credit cards can be awesome if you're someone who knows how to use them wisely, if you don't spend more than you make. We have been able to save so much when it comes especially to traveling just by having those credit card points and being able to use those efficiently. I have learned a lot that most of the people who are successful in life aren't necessarily working the most hours. I do think that that can be a way that you find success, but usually in life they find a way to work smarter, not necessarily harder. Write the thank you note. I was always thinking as a kid when I got gifts, but I never really loved writing. I think I've also just never loved my handwriting, so that's been a part of it, but I know they're old fashioned, but it means so much to write a thank you note and to receive that, especially on the other end. Expressing gratitude is really proven to show that it makes you a happier person when you're not only thinking about the things that you don't have, but actually spending the time to sit down, write a thank you, and think about someone who thought of you, I think is a really beautiful thing. Plan your day the night before. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but for me, when I start the day and I already know that these are the things that I need to get done today or I would like to get done today, I get so much more done in the day. I don't start the day in a frazzled state of mind. I always like to do this before I go to bed. I know that that can also stress some people out, but for me, just kind of brain dumping everything before I enter that rest so I can actually rest, going back to that last tip, is really, really important. And it really doesn't take a lot of time too. It takes a couple of minutes just to write it out, but I find that this really, really helps. Implementing a weekly date night. We are not perfect at this. I think especially when it's just the two of us right now. It seems like a lot of our nights together, just watching TV and hanging out are kind of date nights, but there is something special about dressing up and going out, even if it's nothing too expensive to, you know, having a picnic and packing your dinner, going into it with a mindset that this is a date night. I'm gonna put away my phone. I'm gonna put away the work thoughts and just spend time with this other person. I think especially in a relationship, but a marriage, really, it is so important because it's easy to get used to the other person. It's easy to take them for granted, especially if you both work from home. That's like a whole nother story too. This is actually something that I want to get better at because I feel like lately we have not been going on as many just kind of date nights and I've just been chilling out a lot, which is fun too, but I really want to start incorporating this more. Doing the thing that you dread the most first in the morning. And this may vary. If you're someone who has a lot more energy in the afternoon, then do this in the afternoon. I am hands down a morning person. I have the most energy then. And so that is when I try to do most of my kind of creative work or the things that I am dreading doing because once I do those things, I have a lot more motivation to do everything else throughout the day. And it's also not looming over my head because that is the worst feeling ever. This is a big reason why I try to work out earlier in the morning because for me, I am much more likely to have a better workout. I'm not as tired. And it is one of those hard things that once I accomplish that, I know, okay, everything else is probably going to be easier. And so find what works for you, that rhythm. If you're someone who finds you have a lot more energy in the evening, it's okay to do some work in the evening. Just figure out for yourself what works for you. Implementing a monthly reset day. I found this idea from Carter Sullivan. She just talks about having a reset day where you go through all the tasks that you need to get done, all the things that need to accomplish in the next month. Reflect over the last month, see your goals then, check on your finances. I think it's so helpful to have a day just to kind of rein it all in, reflect and move forward knowing exactly what you want the next month to look like. It doesn't have to be a whole day either. It can just be doing this for a couple 
couple of hours. I think especially with a family, having like a little family meeting would be really nice. That's something that I would love to do in the future too. I think having all your ducks in a row and just feeling more organized can ultimately improve your life a lot. Stop multitasking. There will be a lot of people who tell you that multitasking is the best way to be productive. It's the best way to get things done. I have learned in my experience, especially when it comes to being out in nature and going for a walk, it is not always the best idea to also answer my emails, to also respond to texts. I feel so much more present. I'm also just better with cash if he is having a day where he's sniffing a lot or maybe not listening to training as much. I am not as frustrated when I am not scrolling on my phone, always trying to do something, always trying to maximize the time. It might seem counterproductive, but I find that I have a much more clear mind when I'm just focusing on one thing at a time, especially when it comes to just walking around and being outside and being present. I don't wanna look back on my life and think that I have only ever tried to maximize as much time as possible. I wanna know that I've really soaked up the inspiration from the moments that I've had and not constantly been scrolling on this thing or always being on the phone, but just being a more present person. Enhance those everyday experiences. I love to romanticize all the little parts of my day. One of my favorite ways to do this is just by pouring a glass of kombucha while I cook. It is a simple thing, but it just elevates the experience. It makes it something that I look forward to and it makes it something that's a bit more special. You can do this with so many areas of your life. Plan dinner parties with your friends, hang eucalyptus in your shower, curate playlists for different parts of your routine. Just make those everyday things so much more special because I think that this makes your life worth living in the end. Try not to operate out of fear. I think especially as an adult now and just making those kind of bigger life decisions, I find that I'm someone who can be motivated by fear and motivated by anxiety. When I know deep down that I get my confidence from my relationship with God and my faith, I don't need to be constantly operating out of the worst case scenario. And I find that I'm a much worse version of myself when I act like that. One of the things that I appreciate most about my marriage and Aiden specifically is he has really helped break that down and just remind me that you don't need to be scared all the time. You don't need to be fearful and always thinking about the worst case scenario, that that is just not a way to live your life. And I'm so thankful for him for just grounding me and reminding me of that. And on that note, be selective about your relationships. This can be the people that you surround yourself with when it comes to your friends, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your significant other. I'm currently reading Live No Lies by John Mark Comer and I love this quote. He says, therefore we must run every habit, every thought, every relationship, everything through the simple grid. Does this sow my flesh or my spirit? Will this make me more enslaved or more free, more beastly or more human? It matters who you spend time with, whether you're a teenager and that can influence influence the decisions that you're making, the things you do or don't want to do, or within a marriage. That's the person you're spending the rest of your life with, the person who's going to be the parent to your child one day. These decisions matter and they shape us and they influence us. And I think that it can be easy to just think that, oh, this is just someone I'd like to have a good time with, but you want to make sure that you're selective with these relationships and you are picking them for the better of yourself and just your growth as a person. And lastly, is just to accept that life comes in seasons. My life, when I I reflect on it is a lot of this. There are times when I feel really high on life when I'm so adventurous and I enjoy life and I'm so excited about it. And there are also lulls. There are times when I'm not feeling my best, when I feel down. And it's easy to think that whenever you're in the high state or the low state, that that's gonna be the rest of your life. But when I remember that I have been through some dark times, I've been through some great times, I realize that life comes in seasons and it's best to just remember that. Get help if you you've been in a place where you're in a dark place for a very long time, I always think that that's important to do, but also know that it gets better and it can also get worse. Now don't remind yourself of that, but just take life for what it is and for the changes that come with it. Those are things that have elevated my life in the past, you know, few years of growing up and learning. Let me know for you, what are some of those big things? I would love to hear. You guys mean so much to me and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye friends.